and we are coming to you live from J. Sarah High School in San Juan Capistano for some NISA Friday Night Lights actions. I am Jose Duran alongside Hector Trujillo. Hector, pleasure again to see you again, my friend. Great to see you, Jose. It's been a long time, but it's worth the wait because this is going to be a big match for both teams. Yeah. Considering that LA Force is trying to get into a role of things, you know. So I expect both sides to come out ready, understanding they have to get the three points, even though it's early in the season. We understand, but it's one of those things that, as we see the players coming onto the pitch right now, that if you're the coaching staff for either side, it's going to be a valuable victory if you can come out on top. Yeah, early in the season, you know, four games in, five points for both these teams in the, uh, uh, in the standings, which we'll go ahead and touch upon shortly. But we'll jump into the keys of the match of my friend here, Mr. Trujillo. Number one, Forseta FC is maintain possession and win those 50-50 balls and the games that they played the best. They won the midfield battles and made sure to not create turnovers for themselves. For Capo FC is bringing Sambrano, Brandon Sambrano, to be part of the offense. LA Force did a good job keeping him out of the offense last game and they were able to come off with a 2-1 victory here. And for both sides, it's forcing, forcing turnovers, and especially in the, in the final 15 minutes because that's when the games get decided, final 15 minutes of the first half and the second half. And any miscommunication there could cost you a point or could cost you three points. Yeah, and fortunately for that Capital team, that did end up being a factor, causing them those three points. In the last match against the LA Force, uh, the last time we were able to go ahead and connect with you all, but it's going to be an important game for uh, both these teams who have faced each other prior, a tie within that. So... Now a Capo FC is going to go ahead and host these teams. Uh, this team, rather, in the Irvine Seta, who is, has identical record, but only because of a differential of goals. Right, They're a plus two. They've scored seven goals, had four goals scored against them. Capo on the other side, five goals, four goals. So that's a differential. Yeah, it's those little details. Again, it's early in the season. These teams are going to play each other another four times in the regular season. They might even see, I believe they will be seeing each other unless something dramatic happens in the Independent Cup. And we get the National Anthem now. <laughs> yeah, and as I was saying, these teams will probably end up facing each other in the Independent Cup, most likely in the second round. So yeah. plenty of opportunities to get to know each other again, but again, as we see the standings right here. Yeah, up uh, the east and the main focus that we're focusing on here tonight will be that Western Conference. As we mentioned earlier, the LA Force was able to go ahead and come in here and defeat Capo FC and are slowly going ahead and pushing themselves out of the pack right here 
and we have two teams who want to go ahead and, you know, we, we mentioned it very early in the season, but a big win here tonight for either of these teams. Yeah, LA Force, as we were saying before, did a good job of taking away the midfield for Capo FC in their previous match, as we see the Golden Boot race here with uh, Patrick Okonowu, five goals already yeah. for Georgia, and Brian Ortega with three goals, tied with several players there, including Leon Marich, who mm -hmm. came in just one goal short last season of winning the Golden Boot to Marcos Nagostad. But I expect a good effort, as uh, we also see here the Golden Glove race. Yeah, and we see one of the, uh, uh, at least in the bottom portion of it, like the sixth and seventh, two of the goalkeepers that we're going to be seeing here tonight with Mitch Norwich and Nate King. Yeah, two very talented goalkeepers have come up big for their sides. In all of the games, actually, there hasn't been one game that they've had a mistake that has cost their team clearly. As we see the players here taking pictures for Irvine Seta FC. And we see the upcoming matches here in Maryland Bobcats versus Georgia FC. And then we also have Georgia again versus the Michigan Stars, who made it to the final last season before they fell to Flower City Union in dramatic fashion 1-0 at Romeo Stadium. Yep, and we took a look at the starting 11 here for Capo FC. You want to go ahead and take care of the reins here? Yeah, we have a goalkeeper, Nate King. Number two, Dylan Shockey. Number three, Manuel Cariuki. Number six, Kian Amin Lu. Number 18, Ari Claro. Number 10, Daniel Siegel. Number 15, Brandon Sambrano. Number 30, Tristan Weber. Number 30, 33, Cameron Vickers. Number 66, Cole Symes. And number nine, Parker Scalso with head coach Peter Carey. As we take a look now at the starting 11 for Irvine Seta with goalkeeper, like we mentioned, in that Golden Glove race. In the mix of things, Mitchell North with his defender number two, Greg Stratton, uh, following by number six, Andrew Klazowski, uh, number 25, Noah Egan, number 33, finishing up the defense there, Alex Colwell, uh, followed by number eight, Jonathan Estrada, number 10, Edson Alvarado, uh, number three, Joseph Ciocheto, and number 11, Shania Cadono. Uh, finishing up here, the last two, number 18, Marcel Salceda, and number 9, Christian Fernandez Mejia, all led under head coach Daniel Gonzalez. Yeah, and Shinya Cadono has quickly become the face of Nisa. He's uh, been an impact player for them. He was an impact player for Irvine Seta during the U.S. Open Cup run that they had recently. It's kind of the Brandon Sambrano of Irvine Seta FC. As we have here, the referee making his final checks. And both sides ready to go, getting into position. And I expect to see a great match. And here we go. Yeah, and we're ready to go. As head referee Maxim Anatore goes and blows his whistle, we are underway here from San Juan Capistano on a beautiful Friday evening for soccer. A little chilly, but not, you're not going to feel that in there. It's a uh, hot tempers, huh? No, and I brought my inhaler with me again, so I shouldn't have any issues. You're all good. Yeah, I'm good. First couple of seconds in, you know, uh, teams, both these teams, like we mentioned, coming in with identical records at a 1-2-1, one, and one, uh, and they're going to go ahead and have to come out with three points if they want to go ahead and stay atop of the things with uh, the LA Force. Right here, some little bit of pressure here by Irvine Seta as they control the tempo for the first minute of play, and they get a throw-in out of this possession. Yeah, going to be a throw-in and very well defended in the back by Akariuki, which I think it's going to be, uh, again, a key player here on the capo side just the way uh he handles defensively but also joins the attack we see a quick turn uh excuse me throw in here chest it down and cleared away obviously by capo uh scalzo able to go ahead and get there and great turn by scalzo see if he puts the ball forward it does so and he goes a little too far gets away there but he was getting towards tristan weber good idea on the pass just a little bit too much on it yeah, good idea, great turn, great move, and that's exactly what you want to go ahead and see from Scalzo and get him, him involved as early as you can. Kluszewski looking for an open teammate. He finally does. Quick restart. It goes right back to Scalzo. He's been uh, involved in a few uh, actions here tonight and cleared away by Irvin Seta. Deflected off of a Seta player and it's going to be back to Capo FC. It was a hard defeat last time against the Force here at uh, Capo. Yeah, but you could almost feel it, if you remember. Slowly but surely, LA Force starting, starting to manage the game in the second half, and I don't think Capo made the proper adjustments. And LA Force, a team with that much experience, you can't give them extra opportunities, and they capitalized. Uh, had they come moving forward, Slimes looking to go ahead and poke that through. It doesn't find it. However, it's Esalen Varado going ahead and get moving forward and stolen away really quickly by Capo FC. Going to go ahead and get a cross in. Bounces in the box once. Bounces twice. A player is down for Seta on the opposite side. See who gets the ball. It's deflected out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick for Irvine Seta. Yeah, he went down awkwardly. He's still down for a sec. Referee's going to go check on him. I think he went for the ball and he tripped over the couple player. 
good confirmation on who that is in a second, but the referee's definitely going to go check because he is reaching for that ankle still. Yeah, and he's been on the ground for, for quite a while here. Two and a half minutes in to this one, and when you're already seeing uh, an injured player, hopefully it's not too serious and he's able to go ahead and shake it off. Yeah, then the last game we had like an injury for LA. Right Force. away, right First away. First minute of play. Yep. Right away. Ivan Hernandez. Ivan Hernandez tried to go ahead and shake it off exactly how we see the setup player do so, and he wasn't able to go ahead and keep it going. But hopefully for Irvine, he's able to go ahead and shake that one off, and we get a quick restart here with Mitchell North. Yeah, that was Shinya Godona who went down for a second, but luckily for Seta, he's okay now. Yeah, key player here. Definitely don't want to have go down if your head coach, Daniel Gonzalez. Here comes Seta, tries to go ahead and get something on the offensive side. Poke forward here by the team, all in blue. The team, the home team. Uh, Capo FC attacking from left to right. The team all in white, the visiting team from Irvine. So made that trip up the five and find themselves here in beautiful San Juan Capistrano. Throw in restart here, three and a half minutes have gone by in the first half. Definitely no action, both teams trying to figure each other out. Kia Am and Luke heading it as well as Kariyuki. Bounces over to Zambrano, headed away. Here comes Irvine Seta with a quick counter attack, looking forward to go ahead, putting numbers on top. Pokes it through, Kariyuki in front of it. Heel back pass, oh, and almost finding its way through. As Andrew Klozelski looking to get that uh, heel pass, doesn't get throw, and the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, and two players collided. Parker Scalso, oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, Greg Stratton who went down, took a hard hit to the knee. Looks, looks like he's going to be okay, but as you said yeah. here, the nifty little pass here from Klozelski, back heel pass, Oof. and then you hear see the two players collide into each other. No intent there whatsoever. I think that there's a good no call by the referee, and he's back up now as well. Yeah, it's great to see Shockey back up, but it was a great cut that he had there, and he was able to go ahead and prevent that from getting any forward, but the official blew the, the whistle. It's going to be a restart here from Nate King. Look, look. He's going to go long on this one. That does so. Goes on, crosses over the line, and goes back in possession of Kariyuki. Goes to, oh, horrible tackle foul. Official says play on. Look a lot worse on here. Flat goes up for an offside. It's a foul on. Kariyuki official says keep going. And Kariyuki didn't go down. Yeah, that was interesting. There was, looked like there was yeah. enough contact. We'll see the replay on this one, or maybe he got all ball. Oh, well, he got ball. Kachinya Kadono got ball, but I guess the referee said he didn't get man after that. And but luckily for Kapo, the player was offside. And now everyone sat there with a chance Back here. Play, ball put through. Official picks his flag up. Nate King completely on top of this one. But the flag those goes up, we're offsides, and Irvine knocking on the door early on here. Yeah, back-to-back -back plays where Irvine set almost catches the defense flat-footed here. Luckily for Capo, they were offside on both times, but Nate King can't be too happy with the way the defense is reacting. they got to keep an eye on those quick little passes that Irvine is doing. And he's going to go ahead and go on, push numbers forward, and get some type of breathing room here as Irvine has... Had a couple of opportunities early on. Back in possession of the ball is Irvine. Here's Salcido is taken away by Shockey. He's going to go ahead and push numbers forwards and opens it up. Very well done so by Vickers. Here's Vickers. Steps on it once. Uh, passes the ball with the outside part of his foot to Symes. Goes again here and opens it up even further. Here comes Capo FC trying to go ahead and get possession of this ball and the game. Weber uh, passes it through. Back stepping over. Back to Weber. And here comes Capo trying to send a through ball. Here takes a shot, deflected off defensively, and back in possession of Irvine Seta FSC. Pushing good. forward and passing the equator through. Go ahead, Hector. Okay, I'm sorry, good close out there by Irvine Seta FC. That was a clear shot opportunity there, but good reaction by the defense. Now Irvine Seta's going to get the throw in out of this one as well. Yeah, it's just the Weber and trying to get something moving forward out top with Scalzo. And the Irvine defense very well on top of it. Here's Stratton, goes even further back. 1-2 back to Stratton. Rolls the ball over, and here they come once again. The team all in wide, the team visiting from Irvine. Going to get a cross through here. Very well deflected in the last second, and here comes the counterattack with Vickers. Pushing forward is Cameron, stepping on it. Back with the outside part of his foot, trying to go ahead and get a counterattack going, but it's deflected and recovered back by Irvine. Cross forward. And in possession of Salcedo. 
Noah Egan here near side. Give and go, and no sort of pressure so far earlier on by Capo FC. Seems like they're trying to go ahead and absorb that pressure coming from Irvine set that with a long ball. Officials flag stays down, chested down. Opportunity for Irvine, and very well defended in the last second. And they're going to get a corner kick out of this, but a very well defense in the back by Capo. Yeah, Shinya Cadona there with the thumbs up on the perfect pass. As we see the replay right there, stays on side somehow, brings it down beautifully with his chest. Good reaction again from Capo FC to prevent that cross into the box. Number 18, Adi Claro. Yeah. And now Irvine Seta knocking at the door with a corner kick here. Very well defended there by Claro. He, a quick restart here by Irvine Seta. Back over to the restart, and it's going to be deflected again by Claro, and it's going to be out of bounds for a throw in. But it looked like he kind of got it deflected off of Godono. Official says, no, it was a corner kick, but just overall, just a great defensive sequence. What uh, seemed to be a great long ball that uh, was able to go ahead and find the Irvine set that player. Yeah, if uh, Shinya Godono gets that pass off a little bit quicker, maybe it gets through, but that slight hesitation prevented it from happening. Headed away. Jersey tuck and pull as we had Cole Slimes looking to go ahead and break away, but the official saw it right away. You see a wry smile there from the referee. He's like, yeah, that's right in front, right in front right, of me. Right in front of him. And there's no way not, I'm not going to call that one. So I'm tossing this back all the way back to Kariyuki. They're going to go ahead and restart it there with Kia Amin Lu. Kariyuki is able to go ahead and push forward there with the highlight green soccer cleats that you see. Scalso able to go ahead and get a quick header there. Goalkeeper all in orange, able to go ahead and get on top of that one. Mitchell North without any problems. Kick restart here. The ball's in possession back to Irvine. Kozelski looking to go ahead and push forward. Passes the equator to the field, give and go. And here they come again as the Irvine set the FSC. Here's Marcel, able to go ahead and stop that ball with the outside part of the foot. Gives a great uh, pass and is still in possession of Irvine. Joseph Ciocetto. Goes back to Edson Alvarado, looking for a cross in. It's going to be no problems for Kariyuki. And of course, as I say that, it problems all over for the defense of Capo, able to go ahead and clear it away and breathe momentarily. Back in possession of Food Bakers, and here comes Symes, able to go ahead and break away through, still pushing forward, and a foul called in uh, favor of Capo FC as they're able to breathe, so, so to speak, for, a, for a quite a, a, a second here. Yeah, that was a borderline, borderline yellow card that got missed. That was a total push in the back there on a possible breakaway opportunity for Capo, and I think Irvine got lucky on that one. And Shockey able to go ahead and looking to put the ball forward to Parker Scalzo, and it's cleared away out of danger by number 33, Alex Kowal of Irvine Set IFC. If you're Daniel Gonzalez, head coach of Irvine, you happy with what you've seen so far in the first couple of minutes? Uh, a little bit. Uh, here's a little push that we saw from Shinya Cadono, a little bit of experience there, as we say, yeah. but oh, watch out here for here. Capo FC. Take a shot from the distance, first shot. On the game is for Capo FC, it's on goal, and it was a shot taken by Tristan Weber. Yeah, if I'm Peter Carey, I'm not too happy at the moment because uh, I think Irvine Seta has been the better team in the first 10 minutes, greater the better chances, but it's still early, still plenty of time left, and I think slowly but surely the both sides are going to get back into the game. Here's the goal looking to go ahead. And great turn by Symes, gets taken down. Official says play on, and here they come once again. Irvine Seta FC pushing forward past the uh, half of the uh, line set sent through ball and is very well defended in the back once again by Ari Claro. Able to go ahead and find Cameron Vickers, Segal, Shockey, Symes, Sambrano, and a great sequence here for Capo FC. Player goes down, official says play on, is right in front of him. The scouts goes down. Yeah, referee letting him play for sure. There's been a lot of fouls that could have been whistled, and looks like he's going to be one of those reps today. He's going to let the players decide it on the pitch, and hopefully. We don't have a situation there where the game gets away from you too early. Yeah, hopefully not. And so far, it's been a relatively clean game. Yes, we've seen a couple of fouls here and there, but both teams have been playing very well and has sticked to the game plan, which is let's play soccer. Ball in the middle is uh, Sambrano once again, looking a long ball for Vickers, chests it down, has the overlapping uh, for Shockey if he wants it, doesn't do so, goes ahead and does a Step over move back to Sambrano. Able to take a shot from the outside, gets deflected and back to Dylan Shockey. Able to go ahead and bring that one down, pushing forward is Shockey. See if he cuts to his right. Yes, he does, and he goes back to his preferred foot, which is the left, and finds Sambrano. Here's Sambrano again with his outside part of his right foot, able to go ahead and touch it to 
uh, Kariyuki. Kariyuki able to go ahead and swing it even further to the line and see if they send the ball through. However, it's going to find the hands of Mitchell Moe without a problem. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication on that pass. If the player leaves a little bit earlier than that, maybe he stays on side. Looks like uh, Mitch North is going to take his time on this one. Yeah, the ball was able to go ahead and find any Mitchell. And if we speak of that ball, remind you folks that Zara is the official soccer ball sponsor of NISA. We're going to go ahead and get through 13 minutes of the first half here. It's still 0-0 between Capo and Irvine. Both teams displaying very well uh, soccer so far in terms of uh, structure and organization. No errors so far from either team. Shockey able to go ahead and put the header for Fines Vickers and see if Capo FC able to go ahead and get something out of this one. Numbers are back now for Irvine. Here's Segal and he able to go ahead and swing it all the way through and I believe finds Claro. He's going to go ahead and go find Sambrano once again. And the ball finds the cleats of the experienced Sambrano. Here comes Capo FSA uh, looking to go ahead and possibly get across in here and they are very well defended in the back is Irvine as they are pushing the home team even further back. Symes. It's very good, great turns by Symes at times. Long ball here from Sambrano. Great cross and great turn here as Vickers able to go ahead and show a master of class of stopping that ball with his chest and with his feet. What a great moves here by Capo FSA and their ball's giving away towards Irvine Seta. Let's see how quickly Capo can recover here before they yeah. get flat footed and Irvine Seta pushing forward. Good back and forth couple of minutes here. Flag stays down. No offside call. Fake for a cross and Capo FSA able to go ahead and get possession of it momentarily. Here's the goal. To find Vickers. And here comes Capo. Vickers steps on it, crosses it over, and finds Dylan Shockey. Looking to go ahead and switch things up and flips it over to the opposite side. And here they come once again. 14 minutes have gone by in this one. Entertaining so far uh, game. And it finds Parker Scalzo, fakes it, gets it over to uh, Vickers, crosses it over. It goes over everyone and able to go ahead and find Andrew Kozelski and see if he's able to go ahead and get a counterattack going for Irvine Seta. Yeah, there was only one player in the box for Capo on that one. Unfortunately, too much on that pass. And now Irvine Seta again, slowing things down, playing the ball all the way around to their goalkeeper. Yeah, despite the, you know, we, the most important guest not having arrived, right, Mr. Gore, it's been an entertaining back and forth, back and forth, and not stuck in, in the middle of the field. Here comes... Irvine trying to go ahead and push numbers four. Here's Noah Egan. And the ball's given away to uh, Dylan Shockey. Give and go. Cameron Vickers looking at uh, touches to Scalzo and goes even further and finds Alex Cole. Yeah, that pass was just behind Scalzo, unfortunately for Capo. As Irvine's going to try again from this side with Shinya. Ball back in possession of Capo FC. And with Vickers. Rolling away and back in. Here they come is Irvine. See if they could go ahead and get something going forward from the defensive side. The ball's going to find Greg Stratton. Here's Craig. Pushes it forward right in front of the Capo bench and in front of head coach Peter Carey. Great ball pre for Andrew Klusowski. See if what Kozelski is able to go ahead and do, opens it up. They have a player in the box if they wanted to. They do ahead and find him. It bounces off his chest. Goal. Score by number nine, Christian Fernandez Mejia of Irvine Seta. Interesting goal, Hector. Walk us through. As we see the perfect pass ring between two players by Chinya Cadono right there. Hmm. The players for Koppel with their hands up saying it was a handball. Yeah, no, it, it, it looked like it was a brief uh, touch of the arm Ref momentarily. Yeah, ref got either way. referee, I mean, if we might have to see the replay on that one because it happened so fast. But, yeah. I mean, there was a perfect pass from Chinya Cadono for sure, but... 
Referee must be saying that the arm was close enough to the body and it was a natural position. Capo FC doesn't agree with that. Here's the replay again on that one. Slow it down and then we'll take a look at here, she folks. Gets through the goalkeeper defense. Oh! Oof! Oof! Oh! Y recontra oof! Oh, man. I guess the referee said it hit the shoulder somehow. We'll, it's we'll, still going to count for we'll set. We'll let you all be the judges <laughs> at home. That looked like a ball. I mean, a handball from here depends how you see it, right? The arm, the hand, what do you want to see it? But there was definitely an extension of it there uh, by uh, the number nine, Christian Fernandez Mejia. Yeah, right that's a handball. That. Yeah. That's a handball. Yeah. Somewhere from and up. Shockey saw it. Yeah. They all saw it. That's what they were all with their, their hands up. The only one that didn't see it was the official. I think somewhere Oof. up in the sky, Diego Armando Maradona smiling down, remembering yeah. his mm. hand of God goal versus Inglaterra. But it still counts for Zeta, and we'll see how Capo FC can react to that one. Hey, Christian Fernandez Mejia probably said the same thing to the other players. They were like, hey, did you hit it with your... Celebralo, uh, right. celebralo, <laughs> tu celebralo. If it ends up on Sports Center, it counts. 1-0 <laughs> for Irvine Zeta FC. They don't care how it went in. They, what they know is that they're on top, one nothing, And it almost seemed like it was coming from either team, right? Yeah, exactly. It's one of those situations. Oh, watch out here. Come. Nope. Right to the hands of the goalkeeper. It's one of those things that enough crosses come in one way or, the other, one way or the another, they're going to get into the box some way, somehow. So luckily for Irvine set that found the player right in point black range, and the goalkeeper for Capo had already given himself up. So no win situation for them. And regardless of how the goal went in, handball or not, the setup play was great from uh, Capo FC with Klazelski ever find Cadono and Cadono able to get a put great ball through there for, uh, you know, the forward Christian Fernandez Mejia able to go ahead and put that in the back of the net. Absolutely. 19 minutes have gone by so far. It's one nothing in favor of Irvine Seta FC, the team that is visiting from Irvine. The battle for the five freeway full effect here in San Juan Capistano. Ball's going to be played two to go. He finds Sambrano, see if Sambrano's able to go ahead and make a turn, trying to send the long ball through to Vickers, and it doesn't find him. Folks, don't forget that for the latest scores, stats, standings, and news, visit nisasoccer.com. Here's Shockey. He was one that was that right in front of it and saw the handball happen in front of him. Yeah, both players actually reacted quickly to that one, but then we we'll see a whistle here from the referee. He's going to tell Irvine set that one seat where he wants to throw in from. See Shockey pick up that Zara ball, the official soccer ball sponsor of Nisa. Nice segue there, partner. You saw that jumping in, it was <laughs> beautiful. You're hired. 25, excuse me, 20 minutes into this one. Symes able to go ahead and find Shockey. The top four Scalzo back against the, hit the goal, and he's able to go ahead and swing it to the opposite end. However, Ari Claro not able to go ahead and get there first. Here comes Irvine Seta. They're pulling the jersey of him. Still pushing for Kariyuki is able to go ahead and get his body in front of him. Looked like he had gotten the ball briefly, but got off player. Yeah, I think the foul should have been called a bit. He's letting him play a little bit too much for my taste. As you see, the giving the advantage to Irvine Seta there on the break. And then you see the contact. that gets the ball, but also gets the player to be a free kick opportunity for Irvine from a dangerous position. Yeah, we definitely saw a tug of the jersey there from Ari Claro. So he's lucky he's not in the books yet. But like he mentioned, the official has been letting him on. And, and it's been a smooth game. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're Capo FC, you can't let get to your head right now. At least he's calling it consistently for both sides, if you can say that. So, But again, plenty of time for them, for the home team to recover from this. and But it's going to be crucial for them not to give up anything here. Yeah, we see how many... And Nate King is going to go ahead and put on that wall. Marcel Salceda on top of it. Not sure who's also, I mean, we see a trio of Irvine Seta players as well as Andrew Klazelski. And now it seems like it's Edson Alvarado is going to go ahead and take the reins. Yeah, Edson Alvarado has an option here. Marcel Salceda as well. Jonathan Estrada. Salceda scored a golazo in their previous home match in the second minute against Arizona from about the same distance. Mm. I don't think it'll be him this time. I think it'll be Edson Alvarado with his left foot. 
Oh, actually, it might be Salcedo. We'll see. One, two, three, four players on the wall. Fisher blows his whistle. It's going to be Edson Alvarado. It goes wide and for a goal kick in favor of Nick King and Capo FC. Just went over the crossbar right there. They had two options. Didn't bend just enough. It was way wide at the end, so no danger for Capo. Here comes Irvine once again. See if they are able to go ahead and increase this minimal one nothing lead. However, it's going to find Nate King without any issues. Fakes his handoff and is going to go ahead and possibly get a restart here right away. Does so and is still in favor of Capo and out of bounds for a throw in. Andrew Koshevsky here again. Basics quickly and short. And here comes Irvine. 23 minutes into this one. You're watching Nisa Soccer Friday Night Actions. Here I am, Jose Duran and Long Hector Trujillo. We want to go ahead and thank you all for joining us in what's been a beautiful Friday night for soccer. Quick restart here for Irvine. Defended very well by Capo and see if they are able to go ahead and get something going. I think the key for them will also be playing on this side of the field, right? Where you see Shockey, Vickers, and they stole it away. Opportunity here for Irvine. Great turn inside. They did it to Kariyuki. A goalkeeper able to go ahead and get that one. Nate King. Great. A great reaction there by Nate King that almost got him on the short corner, but he was able, like a goalkeeper from the NHL. He was able to yeah. react quickly. And Pippen has a replay on that one. Another turnover, unnecessary turnover for Capo. She's a close range shot. And for a second, thought it was going to be a cross, but he reacted like an experienced goalkeeper right there. On the opposite end, it was Scalzo looking to go ahead and get something going for Capo. And the officials, however, is going to go ahead and blow a whistle for a free quick restart in favor of Irvine. And that's one of the things we were talking about before the match, keys, keys to the game, minimize those turnovers. Because you, you know you're down, maybe not correctly, but you're down one nothing. There's yeah. still plenty of time left, but you can't add things to make things complicated for you the rest of the match. So you got to play disciplined. If there's any adjustments you have to make, do them at halftime. But worst case scenario, make sure you don't live, leave the first half down more than one goal. Yeah, still very much in the range for Capo FC to go ahead and turn this one around. After the goal as well, I think Seta have kind of taken their foot off the pedal, so to speak, and are not as uh, on the attack, I'd say, than they were in the first couple of 10 minutes. And they're seeing something from that side of the pitch. For some reason, their attack is and their pressure is coming from that side, and that's paid dividends so far. Yeah. Here comes very well defended by Segal, able to go ahead and poke that ball off of Jonathan Estrada. And Segal commits a foul on his style right away, too. Looked like he was going to go quickly, but decides to slow it, slow it down. Lay it off for his teammate, Noah Egan. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and get us restarted as Egan. We're looking to go ahead and e to go short, but the spaces have been not very limited by Capo very well. As we see, Symes put some pressure, and that pressure has made Irvine go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Mitchell North. Back to uh, Noah, here's Egan. Touches it and very well done so and like a wall out there, Kariyuki able to go ahead and stop that offensive look and here comes Vickers looking a long ball for Adi Claro. What a job by Kloszewski yeah. controlling the possession otherwise there wasn't a good chance for Capo from the opposite side of the game. There's Sambrano able to go ahead and touch it to Siegel, Sambrano we haven't seen his say his name as much as well as he was part of one of your keys to the match here. Yeah, that was the second key to the match. Make sure Sambrano's part of the offense. Irvine Sato's done a good job of minimizing his possessions. And so far not a factor. We'll see if Peter Carey and the coaching staff making any, any adjustments for the rest of the match. About halfway through this first half, Siegel had it to Vickers. Back to and stolen away by Irvine Seta and trying to put a ball forward here to see if they get through it. Kariyuki able to go ahead and slide. And the official said he slid very well, pokes the ball away for a corner kick. Yeah, great reaction oh. by the defense again. Nice pass, Shin Kadono had a chance one-on-one. -on -one. 
Kariyuki times it just yeah. perfectly, closes out the cross. Looks like there was going to be a cross and not a shot. It'll be a corner kick for Irvine Seta, but great reaction there, preventing a scoring opportunity. I mean, he timed that to the T. It needed to be, otherwise yeah. it's going to be a PK for sure. Great stuff there by referee Maxi Malatore on top of that one. And here comes Irvine with the cross all the way to the second pole. However, there was a shove there. The, the official was on top of this one. Blows his whistle. Yeah, a little bit of a pull up a jersey there. As there's a cross into the box. Two players, a little bit of yeah. a push actually there from uh, Greg Stratton that the referee saw correctly. And now Capo FC tries to build something recovered by Irvine. Yeah, Shockey gives it away exactly to Salceda. And here comes Joseph Ciocetto, opens it up all the way to the far side. Here they come once again. Here's Kozelski. He's had a very well first half, I'd say, for the number six. And it goes back to him right away to Kozelski. Back in possession of Irvine. See if they're able to go ahead and extend the lead here. 28 minutes have gone by in the first half in favor of Irvine Seta FC. Sambrano able to go ahead and put uh, some pressure there as well as to go and is back into Irvine. They're going to go ahead and put across his official says play on and now he blows his whistle. He had given that play on and now he gives a card to uh, number 18 here, Adi. Claro. Yeah, first yellow card of the game. He was going to give the advantage to Irvine, but then Capo recovered, so he decided to blow the whistle correctly. I think it was the correct call. Let's see Greg Stratton there. Nice little pass. Krzyzewski trying to get through, and there's a contact preventing the ball. And now we're going to get another opportunity here for Irvine. Yeah, very well uh, deserved, I'd say, right? I think uh, Claro was forgiven that last uh, tug of the jersey pull foul right. uh, for that yellow, <clears throat> not this time around. Two players on that wall, Cameron Vickers as well as, I believe it's uh, Segal. Uh, one, two, three, four, Irvine set that player is in the box. It's going to be crossed into the opposite side, headed once and bounces off or a goal kick, but they're getting those crosses to the second post very rather than easily. Here. Yeah, he won that ball way too easily up in the air. And number 33 for um, Irvine Seta was able to, to get that. I'm sorry, number 13, Alex Colwell. So pretty much yeah. those things that you got to keep an eye on, like we said for Capo FC, if that would have been right on target, I don't think that the goalkeeper could have done anything to stop it. Yeah, and he had the, the height for sure over uh, Dylan Shockey, but fortunate for Capo, that ball goes out of bounds and out of play and in favor of Capo who give the ball right away back into Irvine's possession. Ball's going to be poked on top and played all the way back to goalkeeper Nate King. Controls with his right and gives it up to Kariyuki. Kariyuki is able to go ahead and see if he comes out of this one. Goes back to King dangerously and he says, I don't want any of this part of this ball. Yeah, Get out of here. That's all that Nate King could do in that situation. Oof. You saw the timely pressure there from Irvine that almost paid off there. And luckily for them, Irvine said they couldn't get to it. But again, you see the pressure here from Irvine starting to slowly but surely pay off. Quick restart, and the official says it's going to be a foul from Karayuki against Cadono. The captain of Irvine Seta goes down, and they're going to get a free kick here out of this one. You will see if Capo does a better job preventing the cross into the box this time. They got lucky on the previous one, as we see the replay right here on the foul. Quick little pass, just a little bit of a contact there. Referee saw it. Left touch. Yep. For the ones he didn't call at the beginning, now he's calling this one, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. But again, we'll see if uh, Irvine can do anything with this one. Fake over, Alvarado crosses this one in. King able to go ahead and get a hand to it. And here comes Capo FSA, maybe looking for a counter attack, but very well defended in the back by Irvine Seta. Here's the goal scorer here, Christian Fernandez Mejia, and he gives the ball away and back in possession of who? Irvine. Here they, uh, here they come once again, the team all in white, great step over move and finds the ball of Salceda. Here's Salceda, and they give the ball away and recovered by Sambrano. Official says no foul and finds Parker Scalzo. He's very lonely up top here and uh, evident here, and they take the ball away from him very well, easily, I'd say. Yeah, he's in no man's land right there with three defenders around him. He had a couple of teammates. So... We'll see what uh, Capo can do, see if they can recover something here. Maybe create some pressure for themselves like Irvine Seth has been doing. Yeah. So far, we're not seeing that, that pressure come here. And Irvine has uh, more than enough breathing room to go ahead and come out of playing and 
create something for themselves offensively. Now oh, we see some pressure here from Capo FC a little bit. Scalzo applying the pressure as well as Cameron Vickers. Ball put forward here. Flag stays down. King comes out and is able to go ahead and scoop this one without any issues. And it gets, goes, goes and starts a quick restart here on the far side. Here's Segal. Great turn. Ball stolen away and recovered again by Segal. Here's Claro. Ball put forward. Cameron Vickers touches it to Scalzo. And Scalzo not able to give the uh, ball back to Vickers. Here comes Irvine Seta. They're asking for it on the opposite side of Salceda. Wide open. And see if they swing it through to uh, Noga Egan. No, they go back into the far side. And you see Irvine here slowing things down. They can kind yeah. of feel the change in tempo from Capo. So they want to make sure the game doesn't get away from him here. And allow Capo to create a turnover and create a chance. Ball put forward. They pass the equator of the field to Irvine Seta. And put the uh, great ball forward here. Cross is going to be poured forward and is going to be headed away by Kariyuki. Momentarily deflected out of there and cleared out of danger by Capo. Ball quickly in play though. Quick restart here. Able to go ahead and find some space with Stratton. Cross is going to be put through here and cleared away by Amin Lu. And it's going to be another corner kick for Irvine Seta. Yeah, I think this is their third or fourth corner of the game already. So yeah, I believe so. And then the opposite end, we haven't had one from Capo, have we? Exactly. You, you can see the lines pushing forward slowly but surely again for Irvine Seta. This looks like it'll be number 10, Edson Alvarado, who executes this one again. We'll see how many numbers are thrown into the box. Yeah, and Alvarado's been very active so far here tonight, but he seems like he's their specialist when it comes to uh, dead ball restarts. And it's going to be... Alvarado, who's going to go ahead and get us started here. Looks like five players in the box. for her. And they're all hovering over an eight yeah, king. Yeah, they're not giving any space whatsoever. Oh, oof. Yeah, oof. he went for you, the you wanna, he went for the yeah. Olimpico. <laughs> oof. Y no le salió. See, the Olimpico doesn't usually go that yeah, far up yeah. high either. The Olimpico in Tijuana, maybe, I don't know. It's in Alvarado. 26 years of age, the pride of Whittier, California. Former Orange County FC player and now here as well as a Tijuana player. Yep. So now he is out here with uh, Irvine Seta and he's uh, so far playing a great game here tonight. Despite being a young player, he's been around the block and yeah. he's got a lot of, lot of experience. Whoa, got him right in the face. No, he <laughs> looks to be okay. Reaching for his nose, but Capo FC with the throw in. Quick restart here and it's Symes able to go ahead and find Sambano. He wants to go ahead and definitely get more involved in this one. He able to go ahead and give it to Claro. Claro gives it to Cameron Vickers. They switch Vickers to the opposite end now. Uh, see if he's able to go ahead and get something going on the opposite side. And it's very well defended by Irvine. Ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be a goal kick as Cameron Vickers was initially playing on the right side side and they flipped it to the left hand side. Yeah, but again, it feels a lot of isolation play from Capo. It doesn't feel like attack that's kind of constructive or teamwork wise. It feels one on one and you've yeah. got two defenders on you. They need to be more complimentary in terms of their attack. So we'll see if that can, can change in the final few minutes of the uh, first half. Here comes Irvine, 36 minutes into this one. Some type of pressure being applied, very well done by Capo. And here they come with Egan. Here's Noah, able to go ahead and give a touch. It's thrown away here by Capo FC. And see if Noah Egan able to go ahead and steal it by back. And he does. Here's no, uh, Egan. Puts the ball forward, but Kariyuki comes out of his uh, defensive structure and puts the ball forward for Scalzo. It's going to be way too far for a throw in in yeah. favor of Irvine. I don't think Scalzo was expecting that pass so quickly. Even if he was, I, it was too much on it. But referee telling him he wants Irvine a little bit further back on the throw in. And we'll get us restarted here. Cleared away out of the danger and back in possession of Capo FC momentarily. And cleared away by Irvine. Here's Kariyuki, able to go ahead and bring this one down to Sambrano. See if he's able to go ahead and shake off a defender and does find Symes. Goes down, down goes Symes right in front of the official. Appeared to be a foul. He says play on and here comes Irvine looking for a long ball. 
And Kari Yuki able to go ahead and cut that one off. Also with five, Christian Fernandez Mejia with a breakaway. Here's Segal looking for a long, 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 long ball for Cameron Vickers. And he's able to go ahead and keep that one in play. Here's Vickers. Finds here for Claro. He's able to go ahead and send the cross over to Scalzo. Cleared away. Shot from the outside. Deflected. And they're going to have a corner kick here finally for Capo FSA. Yeah. Let's see if they can take advantage of this one. A little bit more constructive on their attack this time. More complimentary. And they got a shot off. And luckily for them, it got deflected. But there's a replay on that one as well. And no individual play right. that you've been saying here, partner. It's right. been a team buildup that you see something coming out of it. Yeah, way more disciplined on their attack. So we'll see if they can keep this up. And we'll see how many players they want to sent into the box 38 minutes gone here cameron vickers looking for a possible tie one two three four five six players are couple uh, inside the box two of them outside being cigar up in the half moon boss going to be crossed all the way through to the second pole and very well defended in the back goal kick yeah good close out there by the defenders making sure that there was no little chippy or little this miscommunication there and I think the goalkeeper again is going to slow things down, start from the back. And as we see Capo just waiting to see if we can pounce on something right here. Uh, but they put numbers up the top two yeah, pressure, huh? Yeah, those final, we talked about it. The other third key of the game here, create something in the final few minutes for yourself. The goal for Irvine, Sa oh, watch out, yep, right there. Even though they didn't pressure too much, they created a turnover and now they got a chance. Sharky looking for Scalzo was able to go ahead and chest this one two times. Able to find Zambrano. Stepping over. Passes to his right. Back to Symes. Collect with his right. See if he steps on it. Does so and goes with his left and finds Symes once again. Goes even further back and he goes with Kian Amilu. Momentarily gives it away but right into Segal's uh, feet and stolen away here by uh, Irvine. Good job by Salceda maintaining possession there and recovering for Irvine. Ball put forward here, not necessarily to a specific person, but more so just to get out of danger, put it in danger. And King able to go ahead and clear that one away. Back in possession of uh, Segal, finds Zambrano, see if he's able to go ahead and pick uh, a target. Does so, looking for Vickers. I mean, that was a rocket of a pass, and the defender over there by Irvine able to go ahead and stop that one without any issues. Yeah, Klojewski closed it out perfectly. He saw that the whole way. Brandon Zambrano almost got a great pass in, but now Irvine set that. Again, in no hurry whatsoever. They got the 1-0 lead in the 40th minute. What do you think? So far, so good for three minutes of added time at the most? Yeah, I think two. Two or three? Yeah. Two. See what the official wants to go ahead and add on here. But it's been a very clean game so far in terms of foul, in terms of play, in terms of flow, in terms of goals. We've seen one already here in the first half. Long ball here. Able to go ahead and recross it. But the official does raise his flag up for... Offside. Yeah, Shinya was just a foot or two offside on that one. Great pass, though. Unfortunately for Irvine, it did not get through. If you were a betting man, my friend, are we seeing a goal from either of these teams in the last five minutes? I don't think so, which means it'll probably happen. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, the, th the way things are happening, unless we see another miscommunication there that creates an opportunity, I think both teams are going to I'll play it out like we're seeing right now, and then we'll see the adjustments at halftime from both coaching staffs and any substitutions that could happen. There's Noah Egan making that overlapping run. He doesn't find him. And here comes Irvine, set that once again. It's thrown away by Capo. Here's the goal, looking to go ahead and push the numbers forwards. The ball's going to be poked away and out of bounds, but it was defended very well by Joseph Shiochetto, and it goes out of bounds in favor of Capo. Dennis Shockey is going to go ahead and get us restarted here. He has a couple of options. Decides to go ahead and go with Tristan Weber. Very well defended in the back by Irvine. Clear this one out of way and back into possession of Sambrano. Here comes Sambrano, the experienced, agile player for Capo FC. Finds, as well, uh, finds himself rather in the defensive side rather than the offensive side. Here comes Kariyuki. Looking for Symes. Able to go ahead and uh, put a ball forward, looking for Cameron Vickers, but it's well defended by Irvine Seta. They're trying and they're looking to go ahead and create something, but it's just very well defended in the back so far. Yeah, a little bit too choppy there again on the uh, push forward. And Kleshevsky again has been right on the spot. So, But again, three minutes plus at a time. We'll see if they can capitalize at least on the one. Zambrano looking to go ahead and switch things up and ends up finding uh, Segal. 
Outside part of his foot goes to Amin Lu, and he, Amin Lu, and he ends up finding Kariyuki. Here's Kariyuki looking to go ahead and touch the ball forward, and Dustin is still in possession. No, however, it goes back to Irvine Seta. Kariyuki looking to go ahead and put his body in front of him, doesn't do so, gets beat, sends across, and Amin Lu able to go ahead and get the deflection, and very well done by Nate King to prevent that from being a corner. Yeah, great reaction there, and Nate King prevented it from going to a corner kick. But again, it's those things you gotta keep an eye on if you're Capo that'll, that'll cost you for the, in the first one and you don't want it to hap happen again. Here we go on the near side here for Irvine Seta. Pushing numbers forward, find Mejia, see what he does, sees he gives it right back. Steps over one, steps over two, Candle with the third time and is very well defended by Sambrano who's able to go ahead and gain possession. Touches it to Simes, here's a counter attack and here to see if Capo is able to go ahead and push numbers forward. Referee says play on as now he blows the whistle, he did see Simes was completely on top of that one and very well done so by Mexum Alatorre, our head official. Yeah, he's gonna have a word with the Irvine player right there as we see the replay. Have a chance for a counter, they take down Cole Symes. Yeah, it was Joseph Chiochetto. It looked like he told him, no mas. Yeah, I think he's on his final warning. Next one, he's gonna get the Tarjeta Amarilla. He has it in his pocket and he's taking only one so far here. Tonight, it was to Ari Claro who was able to go ahead and receive that yellow card, but so far, clean game. Quick restart here once again for Irvine. Set that two minutes left into this one, plus whatever the official wants to go ahead and add on. And if you're Capo FC, you're not too desperate right now because you know the last time you played Irvine, you were down one nothing. You ended up tying the game very late, I think in the 83rd minute. It was an assist by Pablo Martinez and a nice goal by Arturo Chavez. So. You have experience in this situation, and I think Peter Kerr is going to have him ready to go in the second half. Scalzo is looking to go ahead and turn. Doesn't do so, and is back in possession of Sambrano. Goes to him again. Well, watch out here. Turnover. And turnover here, and he's got an attack here looking for Christian Fernandez Mejia. He's only a lone man here. Tries to poke the, poke the ball. Official says play on. He, he diddly tried to go ahead and fake the official foul there. Didn't warn him for a yellow. Yeah, referee was all on top of that one. I think it was a correct no call. It was a nifty little pass to himself if it gets yeah, through. Yeah, yep. Referee wasn't buying it. Yeah, tip your hat off for the attempt at it. Because like you said, if he pulls it off, it's possibly a lead to a golazo. Official blows his whistle. Edson Alvarado is going to go ahead and put that one forward. But a throw in, actually. And if you hear you're him, you're wondering, well, I already got away with... Uh, Maradona. Yeah, and hey. can get away with this one. Las Picardias. <laughs> Exacto. Quick restart here from Irvine Seta. Ball's going to go all the way back to Noah Egan. So far, no errors in the back line for Irvine. Scalzo able to go ahead and put some pressure. Long ball here. It's going to head it by Kari Kariyuki. Still pushing forward is Irvine. Here's uh. It's an Alvarado, crosses it, now with his left, and he goes even further back. And this is Joseph Ciochetto. He has Noah Egan on the near side, finds Noga, and he goes even to Marcel Salceda. Here's Salceda, tries to find uh, Mejia, and Sambrano's able to go ahead and steal this one away. We haven't seen exactly how many minutes will be added on. We'll get confirmation on that in a second. Ball back into Irvine, and he puts the through ball here. It could be the second goal. A single, a single, a single, a single. No, what a great save and rebound, and goes out of bounds. What a save by Nate King here, Hector. Incredible save Whoa. by Nate King. Another turnover there that Irvine set that almost capitalized on. We watched the replay right here. Perfect timing on the pass there. Great reaction by Nate King, and then the second shot goes just wide. If he shoots it with the power that he shot that second <laughs> shot on target, we're talking to nothing. Exactly, and that could have been a backbreaker right there. And there's the final whistle. One minute. One That's minuto. It. One minute given here by the official as he blows the whistle for halftime. What a great way to end it here for the first 45 minutes. It is one nothing from Seta FC. Briefly, Hector, comments and thoughts. Yeah, even though the goal was controversial, I think all things considered, it, w it is a spare, fair scoreline. I think Irvine's created the most chances. Here's a replay on that one. <laughs> Arm extension, goal in. Capo FC players reacting. Shinya Godono, again, with another assist to his tally. Gets in between. Unfortunate for Capo FC, but if you're Seta, I mean, Mano de Dios, therefore, 
the number nine, Cristian Fernandez Mejia. That is it for us here in the first 45 minutes. We'll be back for the second half actions. Don't go anywhere. It is one nothing in favor of Seta FC. <laughs>
And we are back for the second half action here from J. Sarah High School in San Juan Capistano. I am hosted on Lineside Hector Trujillo. Hector, what a first half that we had here. Yeah, as we were saying before the end of the first half, I mean, it is tough the way the goal came in if you're Capo FC, but if you see how much pressure, how many opportunities were created throughout the uh, first 45 minutes, I think Irvine was the better team. We'll see what adjustments are made by the coaching staffs here. We'll see if any substitutions came in. As the referee's there checking this watch, the Irvine players are already on the pitch as well as the Capo FC players. Can't see from this angle if there were any substitutions, but again, we'll see the first five minutes are gonna tell us a lot as to how much pressure Capo wants to, to they did it did pay off a little bit at the end for them. We'll see if they wanna maintain that for the first few minutes and then make the adjustments as they go on. Absolutely, and if there's one thing we know from Irvine Seta, at least from the four games that they've played officially, they have conceded four goals. So if that's something that you want to go ahead and pay attention to at home, see if Capo FC is able to go ahead and capitalize on that and come up on top here tonight. So far for Capo FC, I mean, they've been sound for the most part, right? It's a handball, miss handball, if you will. It's the reason why they're down. But either way, it seems like a parts of the game, they were completely dominated by Irvine. Yeah, and at the end, it could have been worse. It could have been 2 nothing down if it wasn't for Nate King making that miraculous save. So, again, still plenty of time left for them. They want to come out with the victory. They know that they let that game against LA4 slip away from them. And we do have a substitution coming in now for Irvine Seta, number 7, I can see here. And that might be Harold Hansen, who just was signed by them recently. The former player for Albion San Diego coming in. We'll see who came out of the match. And here's the whistle. And we are ready to go and underway for some Friday Night Lights football action from beautiful San Juan Capistrano. Thank you once again for making us part of your Friday night plans. We have an entertaining one here between Capo and Irvine Seta. So, so far it's a 1-0 lead in favor of Irvine, official blows his whistle, and we're gonna have a free kick. As he blows a whistle, I remind everyone there's been only one yellow card given out here tonight, and that's to Capo's player, Ari Claro. As the official blows his whistle, we're gonna see a quick restart here from Edson Alvarado. He's been the one in charge for every dead ball restart for uh, Irvine Seta. And we're gonna have a cross once again. Taking our time on this one. Official blows his whistle. Boss gonna be put to that second post. And cleared away, I believe was from Parker Scalzo. He's got uh, a, a shocky rather. Inside the boss. Pock could through still here. Very well defended. One time, two time, three times. Not able to go ahead and get on top of that one and cleared away out of danger. But here comes Irvine once again. They're knocking on the door. And they're pushing numbers. Ball played here with Noah Egan. And recepted again back to Noah. Here's Egan. Has uh, Symes defending. Ball cleared away by Shockey. Official says it's going to be off of who? Off of a Capo player. We start here. As we see Andrew Klazelski in possession, goes even further back here with Alex Colwell. And there's Egan. Dummy fake pass and doesn't find the feet of anybody. It's gonna be a throw in in favor of Capo FC. They go quick. Karayuki able to go ahead and close that one out back in favor of Irvine. See if they push the gear here, fakes over one and not able to get through Sambrano, who's able to go ahead and bring this one down and touches away match of three for Symes. Able to go ahead and send a long through ball. It's going to take a bounce and clear it out of danger. Here's Irvine. Shockey defending, still pushing forward. Dummy ball through here is going to go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Noah. Excuse me, Nate King. Knocked out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds. Yeah, a little bit of a 50 50 ball there. But you can already tell that number seven for Urbain Seta, Harold Hansen is making an impact right off the bat. Here's Vickers still pushing forward here. He's gonna take a shot from distance, why not? No problems there for goalkeeper Mitchell North though. 
Again, Arbain Seta trying the side of Shinya Kodono, but they have to slow it down. Ball played on the way back with goalkeeper Mitchell North. Fakes it and he goes near side, excuse me, far side with Noah Egan. And goes inside for Joseph Siocheto. Good pressure put on top here by Capo. Ball looking to go ahead and make a pass. However, it's given away back into for Irvine. Fakes it once, puts it forward, still going forward. Has an option to touch it to if he wants. He's going to take a shot. And two times able to go ahead and get that one is Nate King. Another great reaction there by Nate King. Irvine set that creating space for themselves in between three defenders somehow, but double handed save. Coming up big once again for Kapo. Back into live action. Opportunity here for everyone to extend the lead. Shots taken. Still there. And it finds the hands of somehow Nate King. Oh, oh. My goodness gracious. George Almeida, who also came in as a substitute, almost took advantage again. Kapo a little bit too free willy here, if you will, to start the second half. Here is Scott Yuki able to go ahead and push ball forward for Simon. Stolen away. Here comes Irvine. Great pop put forward. It's deflected and it got stuck there uh, on the heels, rather, of, I believe it was, uh, excuse me, George Almeida, who's also made his way into this one. And here comes Irvine. It means uh, the official doesn't blow the whistle. And here comes the team from down south pushing numbers here 50 minutes have gone by and this first half is looking a excuse me second half is looking a lot how the first half is opportunity here for everyone to get across in this uh it's in alvarado goes even further back see they give it back to him they do go to alvarado and he goes even further back and they find george uh excuse me greg strand your strand touches it once cross is going to be put deflected off of Symes, and it's going to find the hands of nate king without any issues and it's been all Irvine set by FSA for the first five minutes. Yeah, and they're still here, relentless with the pressure. They see an opening here, and again, recovery. Graven ball away. It's Navarro able to go ahead and put that one forward. It could be talking about the second. It's cleared out for a corner kick on our screen. It almost looked like it was going to be an auto golazo, but it goes out for a corner kick. And all from a turner right there. Georgia made a thought about the shot for a second, but luckily Capo reacted just in time. He went for the pass. Now they get a corner kick out of this one. Yeah, Nate King's going to go ahead and assist with getting them the ball since you know, Irving has no issues with taking their sweet time here and milking as much of the clock. I mean, it's very early, but anything might help. Cross is going to be put here for the second post like they've been looking for all night. It's going to be headed once, punched away. Not the best of punches out of there from Nate King, but it's cleared away out of danger into uh, – the feet of Parker Scalzo. Scalzo looking to go ahead and turn. is fouled. And the official says it's going to be a foul in favor of, jo uh, excuse me, of Capo FC as Joseph Stiocheto commits the foul and receives the yellow card. Yeah, you can see the motion there from the referee. Repetition of fouls there. Definitely, uh, even if it wasn't repetition of fouls, that just that would have warranted a yellow card all by itself, preventing the counterattack for Capo. Really definitely hugged them there and they have able to go ahead and clear that one out of the way. So Gawai will restart us here and he goes short with Shockey. Here's some Brano. He's going to go ahead and let this one go out of bounds and get us a rest quick restart here. Boss going to be fought over in the corner. He's going to be deflected off of Fu off of a Nervine set that player and Capo gets a corner kick here. Again, we'll see how many numbers they want to throw in here. You do not want to leave yourself flat-footed on the counterattack if you're Capo. Irvine Seth has definitely been way too close if you're the home team to start the second half. Here's Tristan Weber is going to go ahead and get us going with this corner kick. Left-footed here. Hand is raised, brought back down. Signaling cross is going to be put through! Oof. Kariyuki able to go ahead and get there and... Briefly get ahead on it, it looks like, for a goal kick, though. Oof, oof, irre contra oof. We're talking point-blank range here. Oh. This is the ones you dream of if you're a goal scorer. 
Oh, it might. I oh, see some pressure here from yeah. Kapo. Hopefully, it doesn't come back to bite the home team at the end. Yeah, got Yuki not able to go ahead and put that one into the back of the net. The clearest of options on night, I'd say, here for Kapo FC is what we just saw there. Here's the go Let's go ahead. I was going to say that was a great cross into the box, and here's a whistle from the referee. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, if you're a Kapo, if you're Kapo looking to go ahead and, you know, get some type of spark, get something, think, rhythm kind of going. That's exactly what you're looking for here. You know, that corner kick, that opportunity gets you going in terms of, hey, at least for the last three, four minutes, we've been on the attack. Here they come once again. Here's Simes. Able to go ahead and open things up. Cross is put through to no one for a goal kick. Yeah, but you see Capo here with a little bit more sense of urgency. Picking up the tempo a little bit. They created that chance for themselves on the corner kick. We'll see if they can keep it up for the rest of the second half. Here's Colwell looking to go ahead and Send numbers up top, does so, but ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be a throw in here for Dylan Sharkey and Capo FC. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us on a beautiful Friday night. And don't forget, fans, to check out Nisa's new streaming platform, Nisa Plus, your home for the latest content, highlights, and live matches. It's all there, all the action, all in one place, only on Nisa Plus. As we see, uh, Capo looking to go ahead and put numbers here. Parker's Kauzo. Hooking it through, and Edson Alvarado looking to go ahead and get back defensively and stolen away from Irvine. Shockey able to go ahead and bring that one down with it very much ease. Here's Sambrano. Touches it uh, further, and the ball's going to find back uh, the feet of Brandon Sambrano. Not uh, able to go ahead and get something going offensively, Arcapo. And here comes Irvine. Set that once again for an opportunity here for the team visiting in. From Irvine, a team all in white. Here they come pushing numbers again. They have an overlapping run. Toss gonna take it for the outside. And a great reflections and out of nowhere, Nate King is becoming a playmaker here in this one. Yeah, he's becoming the man of the match for Capo FC. Definitely saved his team. Shinya Kadona here with his patented right foot shot from long range. Oof. Double handed out of bounds, corner kick. You can see a little bit of frustration there from Harold Hansen. He was expecting the pass into the box. But another corner kick here for Irvine. 55th minute here, corner kick for Irvine. See one, two, three, four players in the box. Boss gonna be crossed all the way through. The tallest player for Apple gets there's Kariyuki. Parker, excuse me, King's able to go ahead and get a hand on it. And the official says it's not without a foul. Yeah, he went out to punch the ball. Then the contact happened on the goalkeeper. They're always gonna, here's a replay. They're always gonna hear on the side of caution to protect the goalkeepers. Goes for the punch out, then there's the inadvertent contact. No harm. Yeah, I believe it seems that they were getting some, uh, getting some substitutions ready as Capo FC, but yeah, it's going to be for Parker Scalzo who's heading out. Yeah, you're right, two substitutions coming. There might be another one actually. Yeah, as well as uh, Vickers. So, adios, Vickers, adios. Galzo. As you see them, Benvenu, Miss You, Olivier Capri. Beautifully said, partner. It's the French of me. Yeah, it's coming cool. out, you know? It is como me mocho. Your French is, is perfect. <laughs> Francois. Aquí se viene Symes. Ball back to who? Alvarado. Shots taken and no problems there for Nate King. And that was about to find the top corner of the net if that doesn't get deflected. Luckily for Capo, it did. And the other player making its way into the game. Welcome, Mr. Omar Sabah, who is replacing Parker's causal boss getting away for Edson Navarado. And it could be an opportunity here for everyone to go ahead and send the least shots taken. Defected of Kariyuki. Kariyuki able to go ahead and prevent that corner kick. Take it out of bounds for a throw in. But again, unnecessary turnovers. That's been the key to the match so yeah. far. You want to minimize those if you want to have any chance to come out with at least with a tie here. So we'll and see. if you're Irvine set that, I mean, put it in the back of the net. It's going to happen, right? You yeah, have to extend that lead and protect that lead. You know, bringing in Harold Hansen has created the opportunities here in the second half, so you're going to keep that pressure up for sure. Head it through here and sent all the way to the opposite side and no problems for Capo FC. It's going to be back in possession of them.
This is Kozelski. Goes further back. Ball's going to be recepted here near side. Back to. Nice Kuzelski. move by Kuzelski. Great stuff. Yes, and oh. given away. Yeah. I mean, he worked for him last time he tried that. Didn't work this time, but they recover. Alvarado, great slide there by Dylan Shockey. And it's going to be a throw in for Irvine. Yeah, there's the turnover right there. Recover Alvarado. And Shockey wasn't going to take a chance. He was going to be decisive on that one. All, all ball. Throw in here for Irvine. Here's Greg Stratton. Back to Greg, and the ball's going to be th out of bounds in favor of Kapo. What do you want to see from these uh, substitutions that came in for Kapo here, Hector? It's about minimizing those turnovers. I think Peter Carey wasn't happy with how the second half started. Controlling, you want to control that midfield. It all starts with the midfield because they're the ones that create the chances, and they're the ones that recover in time to prevent the counterattack. So slowing down the tempo when you need to. You know you still got plenty of time left to find that tight goal at least. But it's got to be starting with the disciplined play and minimizing those mistakes. 50-50 ball headed and back in possession of who? Of Capo, Segal, looking for Caprine. Able to go ahead and get back in possession of Capo momentarily. Segal, Symes. See if he goes even further wide for some. Not exactly who Symes saw there, but ball's going to be out of play in favor of Irvine Seta. And if you're Irvine Seta, you're in no hurry whatsoever. You know if you created chances for yourselves. You still got the one nothing lead. You want to maintain that tempo. 60th minute here, 30 minutes to go. And just like that, a ball put through here. And here comes Irvine looking to go ahead and put numbers. They have the opportunity to go ahead and extend the lead. He's going to go ahead and take a cross in. Takes a deflection and once again, they king. Yeah. They don't have to wear capes at all times, like they say, my friends, but superheroes <laughs> is a superhero tonight is wearing all green and a number one. I was going to say, if Landon Donovan can get a statue in front of the L.A. Stadium, then Nate King's going to get one in front of Jay Serra. Look at that double-handed save. Knocking off to a corner kick, but he's, he's saved at least three or four goals yeah. so far for Capo FC that I've counted. I mean, he's the reason why things are still 1-0 and an opportunity for Capo to go ahead and possibly still win in, in this game. But, I mean, what a great save for Nate King. And if Capo were able to go ahead and turn, turn around, you're talking about man of the match. Yeah, absolutely. Corner kick here for Irvine's going to Oof. Goal kick in favor of Capo FC. Quick restart here for Dylan Shockey. Daniel Segal, Caprine, able to go ahead and reception it but without giving it away and back in possession of Kapo FC chested down here from Kozelski able to go ahead and poke that one forward here comes Irvine put through here and very well defended in the back by Kapo FC see if they look over to uh, get a counter attack going but it, uh, Irvine's very well organized in the back line and throughout the game as well here's Symes he goes his, go ahead opens it up does so in, in the far side overlapping one by Sombrano see if they find him Ball's going to be placed and out of bounds and a throw in for Irvine Seta. Yeah, it's, at least you saw a little bit of a build up there from Capo FC. Irvine Seta did recover in, in time to prevent any chances, but that's slowly but surely what you want to see for the rest of the match if you're Peter Carey. Start that build up, be disciplined, and again, do not create any chances for the opponents. Throw in here from Noah Egan. Very well defended, however, by the home team. And here they come pushing numbers, looking for Sabah. It doesn't find so. And it finds, however, Mitchell North, the goalkeeper all in orange for Irvine. Back here for Greg Stratton. And here they come once again, the team all in white. And very well defended by Dylan Shockey. Mm, Kloshevsky thought about going quick there. He saw George Almeida streaking, but they slow it down instead. Here's Kariuki. Science pokes it even further. And here they come once again. Looking at the top for Sabog. Doesn't find it. Take it away out of danger from Irvine. And it's going to see if they put something Ooh, nice pass. Like great heel touch. And doesn't find an opportunity to go ahead and find the 1v1 versus the goalkeeper. If he 
extends the speed, but very well defended by Capo. Yeah, if he would have gone through on that one, they would have created a one-on-one -on -one chance. I don't know if Nate King could have stopped that one, but great reaction by the defenders. They're shocky. Chest it down. What a great reception by Symes. Picks his heads up. It puts a great ball here by Green. That was it. I mean, why not, right? Yeah, I think he got a little bit impatient. He could have taken a couple more seconds mm. on that one. He had the defender beat. Here's a replay on that. Great pass yeah. into the box. It's a green light right there. Yeah, he tried to go Lasso from long distance. Klitschewski closed out right in time. But, hey, it's better than nothing, and it's probably their best chance so far in the second half. Yeah, so for tonight, limited options for the home team. But thanks to superhero Nate King, I mean, the reason why they're still down just by one goal is because of him. He's had a great showing so far here tonight. And here they come once again. Capo looking to push things forward. Gets away from one, does a great ball put through. They're inside the box, have numbers if they want them. Fakes it to his left, touches it once again. They're still inside the box. Is FC. Now they're going to go ahead and cross it, looking for Kapim, but however, the official is going to go ahead and wave his flag up oh, for offsides. Yeah, that cross into the box needed to come in a little bit quicker than that. By that time, the player was already offside, so as we see the cross in. Good call there by the referee, definitely a couple feet offside. But uh, yeah, he was on that one. Yeah. Referee having a word here with the goalkeeper, Mitch North, for some reason. You know, obviously, way too early to go ahead and park the bus and even earlier to go ahead and start wasting minutes. But any type of second that you could milk helps, huh? Yeah, and if you're a goalkeeper, you, want, you never want to do that too early because sometimes it works against you. Yeah. And that's probably what the referee is saying. If you start doing it now, I might have to add on a little bit extra. So, you know, kind of you want to overcompensate here. Ball stolen away, and here comes an opportunity for a counter attack, and they open it up far side. Past the equator to the field, looking for the ball. He is able to reception it, but it's back against the goal. Now he turns towards goal and see if they have a better looking opportunity here going forward. Kariyuki keeps pushing forward with those green cleats of his, posted to uh, Noah Segal. And the official blows his whistle finally as Daniel Segal falls down for a free kick in favor of Capo. Yeah, that was right in front of the referee as well. Jonathan Estrella got too much of the man, went for the ball. Correct me if I'm wrong here. This was Brandon Sombrano one of the ones who went out for substitution? Ball's going to be crossed in here. Crossed. Chested down. Opportunity for recross. Deflected out of bounds. Yeah, definitely one of the yeah. substitutions that came out. As we see, Herrera restart us here. Ball back in possession of Science put forward here for Capo. He's going to get an opportunity for get a good cross in. Does so, possibly looking for Caprine, doesn't find the feet of anybody and is going to be a clearance out of danger from Irvine. Ball's bouncing, 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 still bouncing, and finally, official does blow the whistle. It's going to be a free kick in favor of the home team. Another player for Capo who stood out the second half is Cole Symes. He's made some great passes, created some chances for his team. And we see the foul there. George Almeida got too much. And there's going to be a free kick opportunity here for Capo. See if they can take advantage of this one. Daniel Segal right there as well. Yeah, alongside Tristan Weber, see which one of these two decide to go ahead and bend that one in. Have numbers up top, but I mean, height wise, Irvine has them beat, but all you need is a great ball with a great bounce, and you're talking it's business. Ball's going to be crossed in. There's that bounce, but. Very well defended as they were trying to find Kian Amelou. They don't find him. Go kick. Good close out there by Harold Hansen, the experienced player who probably is previously played in MLS for the Portland Timbers. Ball put forward here. Kariyuki defended. Heads it all the way through. Dangerously. It's oh. given away. It could be the 2 0. No. Do I sing it? Do I sing it? Do I sing it? Build him a monument. No. Build him a monument already. Oh. Madre mia. No, said Nate King. You cannot sing this goal. And like I said, the hero tonight is wearing all green at number one. Absolutely. Oh. Look at this. Just look at this replay. Enjoy it if you're a soccer fan here. George Almeida, one-on-one. -on -one. Great job by him, S keeping possession. Look at that <laughs> right-handed save and recovery. Nate King. Oh, what a game. What a game.
I mean, at this point, you feel unbeatable, right, if you're in the back of the net for if you're king? Look at him. He looks like a boxer has gone 15 rounds already, man. He's giving every inch of his effort here. If Capo's able to turn things around, they should give him 10 points for this one. Oh, man. You know what he needs is just for him, himself to go out there and get a goal. <laughs> exactly. You know, Chilaver style. Free <laughs> kick. Why not? Quarter kick here for Irvine Seta. Looking to go ahead and possibly extend the lead. Put through. Punched away by Nate King. Possibly a, a better option to go ahead and catch it. Doesn't do so. Ball's going to be bouncing back in favor of Capo with Nick King. Yeah, all the players turned their back for a second thinking the ball was going to go out of bounds. Yeah. Uh-oh. And I, I, I believe it did. Yeah, I think it the did? official said that. Uh-oh. The referee's blown the whistle here. It yeah. went out of bounds. I think that okay. the thought was that it didn't go for a goal kick. You can see the frustration yeah. here by the goalkeeper. That's what the confusion was by all the players. So ball back in play now. Quick restart here. You almost want just that tie to come or that turnaround. For Nate King, amazing saves by Superhero King. Clears this one out of danger. Headed back into possession of Irvine. See if who finds it. It's going to be Edson Alvarado Karayuki able to go ahead and steal this one away. Ball, long ball, looking for the ball. Long, 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 but he gets there. He is looking for having to have some numbers. And now he's able to go ahead and find a teammate. Here's Simon. See if he goes, puts the ball forward. Here comes Capo FC looking to go ahead and get something going, but very well defended in the back by Greg Stratton. Yeah, for a moment they had looked like they had a better chance than that, but great recovery by the defenders for Irvine. Minimized the opportunity there. Here comes the goal, looking to put forward Symes. It could be an opportunity here for Capo to go ahead and tie this one up. Boss going to be opened up. They have two players in the box. Now with a third one, Symes joining in the attack. Boss going to be crossed in, but goal kick in favor of Irvine. Yeah, that cross needed to be way better than that. There were three players in for Capo who had a chance. There were three defenders, so it would have been a 50-50 ball. As you see, set that up here, Mitch North slowing things down. In the 71st minute of play. Yeah, 71st, just like that. Time's going away about 19 minutes ago, because whatever the official wants to add on. As we mentioned throughout the broadcast, you know, Mitchell North's going to go ahead and milk as much time as he can from this. Finally, I think this is probably the last time the official is going to go ahead and let him take this much time. Kariyuki able to go ahead and head this one out of danger. And it's going to be a throw in for Irvine. As you can see here, Capo trying to speed things up. Yeah. Andrew Koshevsky in no hurry whatsoever. Now he's going to put it back in play. This is George Almeida. Long through with the ball here, but no problems for Nate King. As we don't see any more substitutions at the moment, but it wouldn't surprise me in the next four or five minutes if things stay the same. Capo FC wants to create more chances by throwing in another attacker. Here comes the ball, but very well defended in the back by Irvine and see if they can go ahead and get something going here. Karayuki, the only one defending. Now they have numbers in the back. Dukapo FC, preferred right foot, takes shot. No issues there for Nate King. Ball goes over the way, over the crossbar for a goal kick. Yeah, that would have been a tough shot right there from that angle. I mean, it was worth a, worth a chance there, but a point over the crossbar. And it's going to need some type of magical touch to beat Nate King. Here in the second half, here's Symes, fine Caprine. Back to uh, Dylan Shockey, see who he goes with, and he goes even to the first uh, far side. And here comes Capo FSA. Ball into uh, Weber's feet, looking on top for Caprine, and headed away uh, by Irvine. Ball's going to find who? The head of Dylan Shockey, looking to go put forward for Symes, and it's going to be uh, Edson back in here for Irvine. Ball's played here near side. Finally, see if they pass the equator to the field and out of their danger. They do so here, but they go back forward to Stratton. Stratton gives the ball back and see if Irvine is able to go ahead and build something up here from the defensive side. And they go ahead and push that one forward to the line. Throw in here for Capo. Yeah, that one had a little bit too much pace on it. Otherwise, Harold Hansen might have had a chance for a breakaway there. Yeah. Dylan Shockey looking for an open teammate. Here's Shockey. Gets us restarted. Green bring this down and pokes it forward. It's going to find the feet of Segal. See if he brings it down. Masterfully does so, but it's poked away. Very well done so by Estrada. 
Here comes Irvine, 73rd minute here of the second half. one nothing lead in favor of Irvine, the team from down south. Currently on top of this one, it looks like it's going to be taking the three points. So if we revise the standings, LA4 still on top with 13. And with the current score, Irvine still in second, but they will have eight points. And Capo will stay in third with five points. Yeah, if you're LA Force, you definitely, the ideal situation would have been the draw here. Yeah. You know, one point for each side. But we said it's way too early. It's going to be a long season. A lot of team can get hot, win five in a row, and things change. You, you never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And here comes Irvine trying to change the story of how this one should end. Uh, Caprin shakes the sliding effort Alvarado able to go ahead and take a shot it's deflected off an Irvine player and back out of danger into possession of Irvine yeah that's the second time that Irvine's been unlucky that a known player has def deflected their shots I'm not saying this one would have gone in but it had a chance to go at least on frame fans check out Nisa's new streaming platform Nisa Plus your home for the latest content highlights and live matches it's all here, all the action, all in one place, only on Nisa Plus. Long ball here, flag stays down momentarily. Now it goes up and offside for Irvine. Yeah, Hell Hansen just barely offside on that one. Maybe a split second before he would have stayed on, but good call by the linesman. Here's Kariyuki, trying to go ahead and put that one forward. 15 minutes remaining here in this one. See if Capo able to go ahead and get a tie. Back in possession of Edson Alvarado. Opens it up. Here they come. Here be Cadono. Fakes it. Shoots it. Takes a shot. Oh, deflected by Nate King. And almost did a 180 to get that <laughs> one back in possession. And I mean, he's feeling the hockey, huh? Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes it's better be lucky than good. And Nate King has been both today. Oof. You see the replay right here. Shinya Dono. Another patented right foot shot from him. It's got like a little bit of a English to it. Luckily, the bounce helps out Nate King. No danger. Ball give this one away and back in possession of Irvine. See if they are able to capitalize on the giveaway by Capo. And great turnaround here by Estrada. And here comes Stratton. Pushes it here near side. Hugging here the end line and back in possession of Stratton. No uh, sense of urgency for Irvine, but as well as for uh, Capo. Mitch North taking no chance whatsoever on that one. As we see a whistle here. Offside. Yep. The flag had gone off. Official was completely on top of this one, but the referee says we're going to go ahead and have to have this restart where the foul occurred, or rather where the offside occurred. Referee telling him where they want the ball now, and that ball back in play. Back in play here in favor of in possession of Segal and Capo. Looking forward for Sabah. Doesn't find it. Ball's going to be back, back down, and here comes... Capo FC looking to go ahead and possibly get a tie. Fake for a cross. Going to go ahead and get some space. Now it's going to cross it. It's going to still be in possession of Capo. The ball never went out of bounds. It's still in play. Fakes it. Shot taken. It goes just wide, but exactly what you want to see if you're head coach Peter Curry. Here's a replay on that. The Urban player stayed out of bounds for a second. Noah Egan, it looks like. It looked like it was wow. more of a cross, but there was nobody there. Luckily for Irvine set that didn't find the back of the net. But probably the best chance so far. Yeah, one more Sabai, but go ahead and take a shot off this restart. I mean, pressure, pressure, pressure. There's 13 minutes left in this one, plus whatever the official wants to add on. But don't even come out. Don't even let them come out of that corner. Boss back in play, and back in possession of Kariyuki and Kapo FC. Then Shaki able to go ahead and step on that one briefly, and it goes even further back, but still in possession of Kapo. This is Kian Aminlu. He's been uh, very involved in today's actions, and here's Aminlu looking to go ahead and put a ball up in the corner. Ball's going to be headed away defensively, cleared away, but it's going to be a corner kick in favor of Capo FC. Yeah, that was supposed to go back to Mitch North, but a miscommunication again. And now you're going to see Capo definitely throw some more numbers out here. Everyone, it looks like, except the goalkeeper now. Huh? The two, Tristan Weber, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players in the box. Eight in the half, which is a goal. Ball's going to be played into the first goal post. It's deflected off the goalkeeper. He lets it go. It hits the post and back into him. And now Mitch North Ooh. counting his lucky stars on that one for a second. It looked like he was going to punch it out. Here's the replay on that. As you said, here's the cross in. 
Tries to catch it actually, Oof. but luckily for him, it finds the post and it bounces right back to him. So both ball keepers have gotten some luck in the second half. Yeah, and if you're FOFC, you're just hoping that one sneaks in and gets the tie that they're looking for. Symes not able to go ahead and poke the ball away. And here comes Irvine switching things all the way through to the opposite end. See the flag stays down, it does so. Official says no offsides. Here they come once again. Here's Irvine set that looking to go ahead and put the number two into the back of the net, but it's very well defended in the back by Capo. Ball's gonna be played all the way here through the near side. See if they're able to go ahead and get there. They do so, but the official says it was via an offside. Yeah, Harold Hansen was coming from an offside position. He did a good job saving it, but even if he touches it, he's gonna be offside. So. The Lashaki's gonna restart us here with Gariyuki just to go ahead and get things moving once again. Here's the goal. Able to go ahead and touch it uh, to the, his right hand side. Claro able to go ahead and put it forward, see the, who it finds. It's going to be back in possession of Estrada and Irvine. Greg Here's Stratton there landed right on his wallet. Luckily, he's okay. Now he's shaking that one off. You can see him on the left hand side part of your screen. And here comes uh, Capo. See if they are able to go ahead and put things forward. Dylan Shockey making that run, and they find him exactly. Shockey cuts to his right, see if he's able to go ahead and send the cross, and he does so. It's deflected off everyone. Shoot it one time. There's a player's down over there on the side here for Irvine Oof. Seta. We get confirmation yeah. on who that is that actually created the opportunity here for Capo as we see the cross into the box. There's a shot, not too much on it, but the referee's going to go check on the player right now for Irvine Seta, Joseph Ciocetto, who's done a good job all game. Uh, he's down and Official's gonna have to keep an eye on this one. I mean, there hasn't been that much wasted time here, but with this, now we're talking about a couple extra minutes here. It could be detrimental for uh, set time. We're trying to get out of here. As you saw there, Kareem side checking on his play. Looks like he'll be okay and he'll be able to continue. And here's the scoring chance, probably I the best one. Play. Look yes. at this great save here. George Almeida with the shot. That would have <laughs> definitely gone in top corner. But again, Nate King right on the spot. That's why I'm, I, I you know, want the couple to go ahead and tie this one up just because and flip, flip it over, right? Yeah. Because then Nate King goes home, and you're talking about having just the best sleep of your life, right? Just so calm, knowing you just did what you pulled off, those amazing saves that he did, and you can go sleep with those three points. And you think about it, you probably had the best game all season, and to lose on a goal like that, that's kind of controversial. Not kind of, yeah, it is no, controversial. Yep, it is. So we're going to see here, see if Ciocetto can re recover, and hopefully he can. Look at that controversial goal right here. La mano de Dios, mm. Nisa style. But you know, Me uh, Mejia is going to say, uh, it, it was my shoulder. Yeah, look, you can I say that. I used my shoulder. Shoulder, bicep, forearm-ish area, I guess. Either way, he got it into the back of the net. There will be a substitution and here for Ciocetto. Yeah. Coming in now for Irvine Seta FC. Fortunate for Tiocetto, he goes out of here, but it's uh, number 28, Daniel Baumgartner, who comes in. And again, if you're Urbine Set, that's about slowing down the play, making sure that couple, you know they're going to be desperate to push numbers forward. Again, not create any more chances for them. Even if you can't create for yourself anymore, it's about keeping away possession and making sure that clock keeps ticking. Here comes Irvine, see if they're able to go ahead and you know, go here, pretty much puts it to end here. But Capri says not quite yet. Dylan Shockey able to go ahead and get something going, push his numbers forward, and uh, touches it to Seagal. He's able to go ahead and let that one go. He's, he had someone coming right behind him. He does so very well, and here comes uh, Capo on the far side, pushing forward again, stepping on it. Back if he goes to Daniel to go, and he does so again to the captain of the team. Ball stolen away from Irvine. Here comes a counterattack here for the visiting team from down south. Ball sp uh, touch here for Hansen, able to go ahead and touch it back into the middle. And receives it back again. Ball's going to be played over to Klesianski and go ahead and see if they're pushing forward or trying to just... Not lose the ball. Nice what a pass. great ball. Official says it knows offside. Here you go. Joe 
George Almeida. Hola, Héctor. You saw that coming. There's only so much that Nate King could do right there. Great pass by Kleshevsky. George Almeida streaking, creating enough space for himself. And barring an absolute miracle, it looks like Irvine Seta's going to come out with the three points that they keeps them right in the eye line of LA Force. Yeah, yeah, with this, uh, they would definitely be uh, in the t uh, heels, rather, of uh, the LA Force current standings as we speak. Irvine with eight points, LA Force with 13, and Capo FC there with five. We mentioned that that might be possibly the Nella Coffin. Do you agree here with that uh, comment here? Yeah, I mean, there's like I said, there's only so much that Nate King could do. I mean, he's done such a great job the whole match, but there's pretty much a breakaway opportunity right there. But we'll see if Capo can pull something off here. There's still seven minutes plus, let's see, another four or five minutes of added time at the, oh, watch out, another turnover. Yeah, not what you want to see there by Tristan Weber giving away Seagal stepping on it. And here comes Dylan Shockey. Now he steps on it, goes back to Kariyuki, and look at the pressure put by Irvine. And Nate King able to go ahead and clear this one and fight Capri. Great, great way to go ahead and bring that one down. Stepping on it and finds Kariyuki and back to uh, Seagull. So go back to Kariyuki. And here comes Daniel. Picks his head up, stepping on it, trying to go ahead and find a teammate that opens up. Finds Dylan Shockey's chest, rather. Missile to his chest. And here they come once again. What a great ball here put for Symes. And see, he was opened it up for Caprine, and that pass is just way too hard. Out of bounds. Kloshevsky here. He's going to take his time again. We'll see if any substitutions. Nope, nobody yet. Yeah, yeah Irvine actually. Substitution for Irvine. I believe it's Edgardo Artero. If I'm mis uh, mistaken, number 16 for Irvine. Oh, we'll see who exits the match in a second. Referee going to have a word with the player, whoever that is. There's a yellow card for taking too much time. And again, like I said, it usually... Never help. I don't know why players at any level like try to milk it. You know, it's so obvious sometimes that the referee is going to notice it. And he, when they give added time, he's not obligated just to give that. He might actually give a little bit more because he doesn't, you know, referees don't like to be showing up like that. Yeah. Either way, he was able to milk some time off that clock. But with this scoreboard, it seems already match set and done. However, there's still four minutes into this one, and anything can happen in soccer and see if Irvine. Excuse me, uh, Capo FC is able to go ahead and change history here. Ball's going to be headed back into the uh, uh, land of Capo. Shockey. I'm definitely impressed with Irvine's way of handling the 2 nothing lead. They're living by that motto, a good defense is a great offense kind of thing. So they're not leaving anything to chance for sure. And they're also uh, still pushing numbers forward. They're still up two, they're still pressuring, still having... Uh, the defense of Gap will be very uncomfortable. Absolutely. Ball's going to be, be played, and, and like you just example of that, right? Just mm -hmm. timing very well, and uh, time management for Irvine Seta has been great in this last couple of minutes. Understand the circumstances. Understand the clock's in your favor. And now Mitch North telling his team he's going to go long on this one. 87th minute. Three minutes remaining here, plus whatever the official wants to add on. Head official of this one, Maximum Alator. Shockey able to go ahead and get ahead. Sabah as well. Well, however, is going to find Mitchell North. Pressure very well done. So and that exact pressure makes the uh, Irvine team give that one away. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Just get it out of danger as they go quickly now. Yeah, Shockey restarts here. Symes able to go ahead and still get possession. They're in that corner, and ball's going to be out of bounds in favor of uh, Capo. But if they want to go ahead and possibly salvage any type of tie or aspirations for a tie, they need to go now. Yeah, you can't score two goals at once. It's about getting the first one and then maybe pulling off a miracle at the end. As you see them throwing a lot of numbers in here. Hopefully they don't, they don't get flat-footed on Shockey, the attack. Shockey, long, 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 long throw in, headed away defensively. And here's what exactly what you were talking about in terms of numbers. But they have uh, Seagal back there and Shockey able to go ahead and get possession. Capri able to go ahead and recept this one back to his left. And he goes back to Shockey. See if he's able to go ahead and get across it. However, it's very well defended Ooh. by Edgar Artero. And the official says it's going to be a foul. What did you see there, Yeah, it was a little bit of a frustration foul there once he lost possession. 
As we see here, Shockey getting through. Good recovery by Murray. That's the contact right there. No play on the ball whatsoever. You saw Kleshevsky there trying to give you a little salute with yeah. the ball there for his defend defending his teammate. Referee decides to keep the yell in his pocket. Two minutes to go on this one. Folks, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. It's been a pleasure for us. Jose Duran alongside Hector Trujillo bringing you Capo FC soccer. Headed. And back in possession of who? Momentarily, it's uh, Irvine. Ball put through here. They have two players in the box. See if they cross it or just maintain it in that corner. Checking in is Artero. They're going to go ahead and give it to him, and it's going to be out of bounds in favor of yeah, I, Capo. Thought, I thought Shinya was going to go into the corner there and try to waste a few more seconds, but now Capo trying to create something for themselves here in the final few minutes. We're in the 90th minute of play now. Yeah, folks, you're watching Nisa Soccer via Go Media. Thank you so much for joining us on a beautiful Friday night afternoon. Ball's going to be cleared out of play in favor of Capo FC. That's a player for Capo's down now. Yeah, reaching for, for his back. Fortunate there, can't see who it is, but I mean, they're gonna have a couple of words with. Now he's back on, which is a great sign to Sabah. Uh, takeaways if you're a coach, uh, Peter Carey? I mean, it could have been the worst score line. I know the first goal we talked about already, but the second one, there's nothing that uh, Nate King could have done on that one. He saved you so many times. You did create a couple chances for yourself in the first half. We can see if you can at least get one here. Yeah, great ball here, and here they come once again. Here's Capo FCC. They're going to go ahead and pull one back here. Great heel touch. See if they cross it. They do! Doesn't find anyone. And exactly what uh, Irvine wanted was for that ball to find no one. Go kick. Yeah, that was a great cross into the box right there. Trying to find Sabah, but too much on it right there. And I think that could have been probably the best last chance to score here. 91st minute here. One minute has gone by of what the official one to add on. We haven't seen how many minutes will be added on. No. Bobby, what do, you, what do you think? We said three minutes a while ago, right? So it's I think that's about right. Yeah. Three to four, maybe just three. And the official's going to go ahead and blow his whistle to get us restarted here. North able to go ahead and send this one all the way to the top and see who gets in possession of it. It's going to be... It's a goal. Looking for a long switch here. They find a great ball here from Seagal. And here comes Capo FC, but very well defended. Everyone's been very well defended in the back and throughout the whole field. Absolutely. Those long passes do help when you have numbers going up into the box. But if it's one guy against four defenders, it's next to impossible. So but I understand Capo's kind of in desperation mode right now. Yeah, you said it. Desperation mode. And full effect for Capo FC. And here comes Irvine Seta to go ahead and disrupt that desperation mode as they push numbers forward. He's very well by himself. Fisher says, without a foul, keep going, keep playing. 90 second minute in this one. And see if Irvine able to go ahead and pull one back. Long ball here, brought down, back to north, pressured. Ball's going to be cleared out of danger and into a throw in. And see if Irv uh, excuse me, Capo puts uh, that ball into play rather quickly. But it's going to be not so fast as the official as Greg Stratton. He's on the ground. Yeah, Greg Stratton reaching for his right for leg right there. Made a great effort on the ball. Hopefully it's just a cramp issue. Yeah, and I mean, it has to be, right? Because I think you don't want to add on any more time to this if you're Irvine. So it has to be some type of injury here and see if he is back on his feet and back on. We're going. Yeah, looks to be okay now. At least good enough to finish the game at least. Ball is, throw, ball is throw in rather for Capo, looking for a Capo player, but Irvine's able to go ahead and clear this one away. It seems like there's going to be one last substitution here, and it's probably going to be for Greg Shren. Yeah, we saw an Irvine player stand up from the bench. Yeah, Stratton gave it his effort to continue. It was kind of tough there. Those cramps in the 93rd minute of play are always going to get you, but good effort by him the whole match. Yeah, very 
Well, sound defensive effort by Stratton and the Irvine team. Again, we'll see how many minutes are officially added on here. Wouldn't expect more than a couple more minutes left in the match itself. Alvarado. And cleared away from danger, but offsides. Yeah. The offsides official blows, rather picks his flag up. As the ball appeared to be just offsides. Yeah, and like we said, barring an absolute miracle here, this might be the last play of the match. Four minutes of added time here. Here comes Irving Seta. In the corner. See if they just hide it here, and they do so. With all the time in. Being clocked out, ball's gonna be out of bounds, 10 for a goal kick. But seems about it, Hector. Yeah, referee looking at his watch now. Nate King in a hurry. Five minutes of added time here. Ball's gonna be restarted here, headed back in possession. Ball's gonna be poked for Karayuki. Does so very well timely, or else we'll probably be talking 3 0 here. Yeah, that was a timely poke here by. Karayuki, Armada was going to have another chance at a breakaway to get a brace for himself. Yeah, very unfortunate game overall for Kapo FC. They're going to go ahead and fall at home once again. Back-to-back -back losses for this uh, Kapo team. And they're looking to go ahead and switch things up at Championship Stadium when they go and visit Irvine Seta next Friday. This ball's going to go out of bounds here. We're gonna have a restart here from Irvine. Referee might add another minute on because of that time wasting by Irvine set a while ago. Ball put up top and here is Aaron Keita was the player who came in to substitute Greg Stratton. Keita and Stratton now what a great step on the ball by Segal still pushing his uh, players forward like a captain should. However, he gives the ball away and back in possession of whoever Irvine Ooh. Boss going to bounce. But Karayuki able to go ahead and somehow regain possession and look for a long ball here. You saw the reaction there by Almeida. He was almost smelling that one again. Yeah, he almost had it. Out of bounds here. Ball is going to be a throw in. Okay. As the head official finally blows the whistle here after about five minutes of added time. 2 nothing is the final score line here in favor of Seta FC. Great goal scored by Christian Fernandez Mejia. I wouldn't say great. I would say controversial, but a great finish nonetheless by George Almeida in the second half and has a team to zero. Uh, Hector, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, a valuable three points for Irvine Seta. Capo FC back-to-back -back losses now to LA Force and Irvine. We'll see what adjustments they can make for the rest of the season. There's still plenty of time left for both teams. LA4 is still probably the favorite to take the division, but a lot to be said from both sides as we see the replays right now. There's a cross in that was the first goal that we talked about. Nothing that Nate King could do in that one. We saw the reaction from the couple players right there. Shinya Godono with one of his patented assists. Touch right there. Yeah, well, I mean, Christian Fernandez Mejia with his arm, and what a great finish here too, Hector. And then George Almeida, pretty much, he's not going to miss those one. A man of his talents, of his experience, making the timely run. Kozelski with a pass, too. Yeah, he's known for those great passes, a little nifty little quick passes that he's perfected during his time in Albion. San Diego, a 2 to nothing scoreline. All things considered, the way the game started, I think Irvine Seta was the better team with the better chances, and we'll see what the coaching staff for both sides have planned for the rest of the season. Yeah, with that, that is the force of the first place with 13, and then Irvine with eight points now in second place, followed with Capo with three, and Arizona in fourth with one. That does it for us here tonight. For all the production team from Hector Trujillo, I am Jose Duran. Thank you so much for making us part of your Friday night. Until next time. Good night.